Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to set up a prediction path for like a grenade or something that you throw. So just to show you how it works real quick. So if I hold down the right mouse button, it pops up this little prediction path thing, and it shows you the arc of whatever you're going to be throwing. And if you use the mouse wheel, you can also change like the speed that you're going to be throwing it at, and it will update the path accordingly. And so if it hits something, it shows that little uh, red sphere at the end, and then if you're just throwing it up in the air and it's not going to hit anything, you can see it eventually ends and it doesn't show uh, any sphere. And then I also just have a little thing. It's just like a little grenade, because this, this isn't really a grenade tutorial, it's really a prediction path tutorial. But I did include um, this in the tutorial of showing you like you know how you would throw something like a grenade. I just obviously I don't have any explos explosions or anything like that. It's just a simple little sphere that it throws. Um, but I do have a tutorial on my channel. I think it's called AOE Damage. I'll try to remember to link it in the description if you're interested in that. But you could use that tutorial to figure out how to make a grenade pretty easily. But anyways, um, so yeah, that's how it works. With that being said, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So I'm going to be doing this from a brand new project. So I'm going to open up the Epic Game Launcher. And then I'm on 4.25.3. Uh, for all my tutorials, I recommend that you are on whatever version I'm on or newer just to avoid any issues. And we're going to select games and then hit next. And then we are going to be using the first person template. You could do this in third person. Um, it would be basically the same thing, except you'd want to just change um, like a little bit about where the grenade spawns from. But other than that, it would be pretty much the same thing. But I'm going to be doing first person. And so we'll hit next. And then make sure you turn on uh, with starter content because we're going to be using like the sphere and some of the other things that come with the starter content. And then just call it whatever you want. I'll just call it um, throwing tutorial and then go ahead and create the project. And then give this a second to load and then we'll jump right into it. All right, so here's our brand new project. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create all of the assets we're going to need, which really isn't going to be that many. And then all the functions we're going to need and all the variables. And then once we have all that created, we'll just go ahead and start uh, filling out all the functions and writing all the logic. So we're going to need a couple new files here. So just in the content folder or wherever you want to add them, um, we're going to add a material. So right click and select material and just call it M for material underscore uh, prediction path. And so all this is going to be is just whatever material you want to be applied to the prediction path. And in my example, it's just a red material. So let's just open this up. And then over here, we will hold down the three key and then left click. That will create a, con a, a constant three vector. You can also get that by right clicking and searching for constant three vector. It does the same thing. And then just select whatever color you want here. I'm just going to use red. Keep it simple. Hit OK. And that's going to be our base color. And then you can obviously play with this material and make it look however you want. But for what I did, I just, uh, if you hold down one and left click, it will create this little node. Just one, left click, it will create it. It's the same thing as going to just constant and selecting constant up here. But I just like the shortcuts because they're a lot faster. And I'm going to hook up zero here for the metallic uh, specular and roughness, just so it's a more diffuse color. Again, you can make this whatever you want. I'm just keeping it simple for the tutorial. So this is the material we're going to use to color in the path, as well as that little sphere at the end. And that's all we need to do for that right now. Oh, actually, there is one more thing. In the parameter or the details panel, if you select the prediction path over here, then go to details, and then search for spline, you want to make sure that you check this uh, used with spline meshes, because we're going to be applying this material to a spline. And if you don't have this checked, then it won't work. So you need to make sure you have this checked. And then hit apply and save. And then we can just go ahead and close this because we don't need it open anymore. And we will use this here in a little bit. Uh, the next thing we need is the little end sphere. So if, let me run my other project real quick. So if you remember that little sphere at the end, that little red sphere at the end, we also want to create that as an actor. So you can just do that right click, hit a blueprint class, and we want it to be of type actor, and we will call it BP prediction endpoint or something like that 
And then this is going to be a pretty straightforward blueprint. Uh, we just want to add a static mesh to it. So say static mesh. And then we want to select for the static mesh, we want to select the sphere. So search for shape, uh, shape underscore sphere is what it's called. And if you don't see this here, that's because probably because you didn't add the starter content to your project. So go add starter content to your project if you haven't already done that, like we did at the beginning. But you should be able to do that. And then we want this to be centered because you can see right now it's the origin is down here. We want the origin to be in the middle. So this thing is actually 100 units tall. So if we just move it down by negative 50, so you should have a negative 50 over here. Then you can see it's nice and centered in the grid. And then finally, we can apply our projectile path material to it that we just made. So M underscore, uh, or what do we call it? Prediction path. So now it's gonna match the color of the spline once we have that. And then finally, we want to disable collision on this thing because obviously we don't want um, like anything to collide with this. So just search for collision and then we can uncheck gener generate overlap events. We can set this to no. And we want to just set this to no collision. Okay. Uh, and again, so we'll be coming back and using this later, but just to get it set up for now to make things easier, I think that's all we need to do for right now. So we can just go ahead and close this guy. And then the final little blueprint we need to create is for that little dummy grenade that I showed you guys, just to have something so we can throw. So let's create another blueprint class. I'll type actor, we'll call it BP underscore grenade. And then inside of here, again, this is gonna be really simple because this isn't really the main part of the tutorial. I just wanna just wanted to set something up so I could have something to throw to show you guys how it looks. Um, inside of here, we can delete this default scene root, or I guess we can't delete it yet because we have to add something. So let's add a static mesh component. And then if you just drag it on top of the default scene root, it will replace it, which is what we wanna do. And then we also wanna add a projectile movement component because that's gonna be the thing that causes the grenade to fly through the air. So we'll add one of those. And then for the static mesh, um, this is where you would set, you know, the static mesh for whatever the thing is you want to throw. So like a grenade static mesh or like a knife or whatever. Um, obviously I don't have any of that stuff because I'm just using the starter content. So I'm just going to make a little sphere again. And then for this one, we actually want to select this sphere just S, you know, just sphere, not shape sphere. And the reason we want to select this one is because we need one that's centered. Um, so you can see this one's centered in the grid. Uh, whatever object you have here, you want to make sure it's centered. Because if you remember the shape sphere, um, the shape sphere is like sitting. So the origin's down here at the bottom. And we can't actually move it down because it's the root component. So that's why we need to use just this normal sphere. So if you have a grenade, static mesh or some other static mesh that you want to use here just make sure it's centered um, or its origin is in the center of the object otherwise it won't quite follow the trajectory correctly okay so we'll just say that's our grenade and then this is a little bit too big so over here in the construction script i'm just going to scale it so if we just drag in the static mesh we'll say set world scale we'll scale it down by like 0 0.25 because that sphere is way too big for a grenade okay so there we got a little grenade here. Um, I'm trying to think. So there's one other thing we have to do here. So when we go to throw this grenade, we want to be able to specify the velocity that we want to throw it at. And so to do that, let's just add a little velocity variable over here on the left. We'll call it, uh, or we need to make it of type vector. And then we want to set it to expose on spawn. So that way we can set this variable when we spawn the grenade. And then whenever you set this, you also have to set instance editable or else it will yell at you. And then we can also set it to private because obviously nobody outside of this class needs to edit the velocity. And we can also set it to blueprint read only because it's not gonna be changing after it's set. So a bunch of checkboxes there. And then all we have to do is inside of begin play, this is the only one we need so you can delete the other ones. We just wanna drag in our projectile movement and say set velocity. And then the velocity we want to set it to is obviously our velocity over here. So we can just hook that up. And there we go. So this is a very simple grenade. Obviously it doesn't explode or anything like that. But for our purposes, I just wanted to have something that we can throw.
Um, oh, and one thing we can do here, if we select the projectile movement, we can set its bounce. So if we search for bounce and select should bounce, that way it will like bounce off of things like a grenade kind of would. Um, and obviously you can play with these settings for your grenade depending on what your object is. Maybe it's not even a grenade, but I think that's all we're going to do inside of here. So once we have this, we can close it. Uh, just make sure you save all. I save all a lot because sometimes Unreal just kind of crashes. Okay, so these are our three uh, blueprints or assets that we need. Um, everything else at this point is going to be inside of the first person character. So let's select this guy and edit his blueprint like so. So basically the way it's going to work is when you hold down the right mouse button, it's going to show that path. And then if you left click, it's going to throw the grenade and then the path is going to go away. Like the prediction path is going to go away. So we need to add some input events here. So we'll say input event right mouse button. So this is what we get called over the right the right mouse button is pressed or released. We also want one for the mouse wheel, because if you remember in my other project, I'll show you again real quick in case you forgot. Um, you can use the mouse wheel to change how fast you're going to throw it. So like that. So we want to listen for the mouse wheel as well. So we'll say uh, mouse wheel axis like this. And then we are also going to want to do things inside of our tick function. So we'll right click and add the event tick. So event tick like so. And I think that's the only events we need. Yes, it is. Okay. So before we go ahead and start writing this, let's go ahead and create the functions and the variables that we're going to be using so that way we're not going back and forth so much. So over here on the left, uh, hit this function button. And we're going to be creating four functions for creating and destroying and drawing the prediction uh, path. So the first one, let's just call it uh, create, create prediction. And we're actually going to kind of call it um, create prediction spline. If you don't know what a spline is, I'll be showing you here shortly. But it's it's the thing that I use to draw the path. It's a spline is basically a collection of meshes that are like from end to end, like a fence is a good example of this, or a road. So it's basically just like a list of meshes that are lined up from start to end and start to end. But anyways, it, it'll make more sense once we start creating it. So this is going to create our prediction spline, which again is just that red line. Um, and then I'm going to add this to a throwing category. So everything in this tutorial, I'm going to add to a throwing category just in case you're adding it to a pre-existing project. You can keep it nice and separated. And then we want to set this to private because we don't want people outside of our class calling this. And then we want to create three more. So if you just right click on this and say duplicate, it will put it in the category and it will keep it as private. So it will save you a little bit of time. Um, but this one we want to call destroy prediction spline. And then we want to make two more. So again, just right click, duplicate, and we're going to call this destroy prediction meshes. Uh, the difference between these two is that this one destroys the spline itself, which is spline is basically just a list of points. And then the prediction meshes are the meshes that are at those points. And again, this it will make more sense once we go to create it, but we need to have two functions for that. And then the final one we want is for drawing it. So we'll say draw prediction spline. So those are our four functions. And then we're going to create some handy little macros here that are going to help us out as well, just to keep the code simpler. So hit the little macro button, and we're going to call this the throw location. So this is going to be where the grenade or where the item is thrown from. And then we're going to make another one for throw velocity. This is obviously the velocity that we're going to be throwing it at. And then we'll make one more called prediction spline valid question mark. And so this is just going to be a little helper macro that returns true or false if the prediction spline is currently like valid or being rendered on the screen. Because obviously if you're not if you're not holding down the right mouse button, then it's not going to be valid. It's not going to exist. And we'll need to know that. So that's what that macro is for. And then finally, um, oh, we can add these all to the throwing category as well. Throwing, throwing, throwing. And then finally, we just need to create the variables. And then I promise we will 
be done creating everything and we can actually start working on the code. But I just find it way easier if we do all this stuff up front because it kind of gives you an outline of what we're going to be doing. Like we're going to be creating and destroying the spline. We're going to be setting the velocity and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, let's just create the variables real quick and then we'll be done. So over here, select variables. The first one we're going to want is the prediction spline. So we'll say prediction spline. And this is going to be of type um, spline. What is this? Actually, it's a spline mesh actor. Or no, it should be spline component. Spline component. Yeah, that's what we want. Spline component. And then I'm also going to add this to a throwing category and make it private since you now have a throwing category. The next one we want, and I'm just going to duplicate this just so it keeps the private. So right click and say duplicate. And we'll call this the prediction spline meshes. So this is going to be all of the meshes that make up the spline or make up the arc or the prediction line. And then for this one, it's going to be of type spline mesh component. So make sure you change this one to spline mesh component. And then we want to make it an array. So hit the little drop down and change it to an array. And then we have two more. So let's just duplicate this one again. And then we're going to call this the throw speed. So this is going to be the speed that you can, the speed that you're going to be throwing the grenade or whatever at. And of course, this is going to change depending on, you know, the mouse wheel. Uh, so we want to change this to a single variable and we want to change it to a float. And then we're going to have one more. So right click on this and duplicate it again. And this is going to be the prediction endpoint, which is that little red sphere at the end of the arc. So we'll call it the prediction endpoint. And this variable is going to be of the type of the blueprint that we created at the beginning. I think we called it BP uh, prediction endpoint. So BP prediction endpoint, and we want an object reference. Okay, so these are all of our variables. Uh oh, is it crashing? I hit compile. Okay, there it goes. These are all of our variables, all of our macros, and all of our functions that we're going to need to fill out. So we are now ready to go. Uh, should be a lot easier now that we have all this created. And so we're going to continue this in part two. So I'll see you guys in part two.